Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 4 of our API and database testing with SpecFlow and C Sharp. And in this part we'll be talking about writing SpecFlow test for WCF API. And before watching this part I would request you to watch part 3 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so for testing our API and database let's flip to Visual Studio. So this was the project which we were working in our previous video which is nothing but part 3 and we were discussing how to consume a WCF web service by adding a service reference and at the same time how to see or how to test it using the assert.r same method and verify if the value is returned from the web service is same or not. But that's not going to be a real case scenario while you work with a large project with a lot of APIs. And if you see the real problem in this particular main method, this particular R same method doesn't really give you any information of what you're doing because if you see this code, all you're doing is like this. You as a developer or you as an automation test engineer will understand that this thing, this line of code is trying to call the PF service client and then you're calling the method get pf employee contribution so far with id and then you are getting the result and then you are verifying the result against the value which you are passing in right here but as a business analyst or a manual test engineer or even you after for a long time if you verify this kind of code of course this is very simple if it is more complex then you will have a hard time understanding what code you have written before six or seven months so in order to get rid of all this problem BDD, one of the greatest concept of behavioral driven development is very helpful and that's the reason we're going to use SpecFlow. So if you want to watch a lot of videos on SpecFlow, you can always watch this BDD and SpecFlow video series which is available in our Execute Automation channel which has a lot of details on how to work with SpecFlow and what is behavioral driven development and how to do testing using behavioral driven development and even Selenium. So this is exactly what we're going to discuss this time. but I'm not going to really touch on the spec flow and BDD and how these things works but basically I'm going to directly jump in and start writing the code in BDD and spec flow and then we're going to transform this code which is completely ununderstandable at this point into a more understandable way of writing the code right so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project and instead of creating a console application project which we created in our previous videos we are going to use a unit test project this time and we're going to name this project maybe let's say employee web service test and then I'm going to hit OK. So this is going to create a unit test project for me. So the project is created and since we're going to use SpecFlow as you already know if you already watched my previous videos on SpecFlow and Selenium and even SpecFlow with BDD all those stuffs, you'll understand that we need to install some of the SpecFlow packages in our Visual Studio and also as a reference for our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just install the specflow package by using this command install package specflow. So I'm just going to hit enter and this is going to install the specflow for me. And let's remove this unit test 1.cs because we're not going to use this way of testing anymore. Rather we're going to add some of the feature files. So for that I'm going to go add and then I'm going to create a folder here. Let's call this as features and then I'm going to add one more folder and I'm going to name that as steps. So within these features I'm going to add these specflow features. So I'm going to add a new item and I'm going to choose specflow features and the name of this feature is going to be PF service contribution test or PF service contribution dot feature and then hit add. I'm going to close this source controller explorer because this is something not required for now. And then I have already written some of the features for our scenario to test the web service. So I'm directly going to paste it. And the feature is this. So this is going to be a PF calculator. And we're going to check if the business logic of the PF or the providential fund is working fine or not for both the employee and employer contribution. And the scenario is this. Check employee PF contribution. So we're just going to verify the employee's PF contribution this time, not the employer PF contribution. And here I have added a step like this. Given I have connected with a PF service and I check the employee contribution for the employees. So the employee's contribution, because we're going to work with multiple employees. 
so you can see that I have an employee ID name and PF contribution expectation so for this employee Karthik the expected PF contribution is 5184 and for an employee Prashant the expected PF contribution is 11,340 right so let's first of all write a very very simple code so I'm gonna just comment this instead of writing uh, or working with multiple data in a table I'm just gonna use uh, this guy this time and then I'm gonna add some of the step definitions so if I just go to uh, step definition it will say that this step definition does not exist so I'm just going to generate some of the step definition and copy this method to clipboard and in the steps I'm gonna add a new class and that class is gonna be something like this all right so I'm going to add some of the bindings attribute all right and let's import that and then I'm gonna paste these steps which we have copied in the clipboard and here for this guy given I have connected with the PF service client that's where we need to add a reference for our service so again we have to add a reference for our service because the WCF service does not exist in this project so I'm gonna add that and let's hit go so this is going to add the service and let's call this as pf service client and hit ok and then here i'm going to write a very very simple code that we have already written in our previous projects so the code is this pf service client client is equal to new pf service client so this is where we're going to connect but since we're going to use this pf service client in many places what i'm going to do is i am going to maybe let's say copy this guy or maybe cut this guy and paste it as a global variable and let's make this as private for now and then since this is private there we go and this is going to be underscore client right so now I can use this variable across the step definitions and here within this particular step definition I can also put the client and then I can call all the methods available within this client and you can see that all the methods are coming up right great so now the next step definition that we have is this uh, and I check the employee contribution for the employees and uh, the employees are the first employee is Karthik so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and since you have if I've already watched the videos on the create dynamic instance method which is available with the uh, dynamic dot assist package so I'm gonna call that guy so spec flow dot dynamic dot assist oops I think it is spec flow dot assist dot dynamics oh yeah so it is spec flow dot assist dot dynamic and then this is going to add one more package for me right and then what I'm going to do is I am going to add uh, the particular dynamic table here so dynamic uh, data is equal to table dot create dynamic instance and then what I'm going to do I'm just going to retrieve the data out from this and going to verify if they are same or not so here I'm going to say assist sorry assert dot or equals and then here the actual value uh, which we are uh, going to get or the expected value which we are expecting is going to be coming from the table right so which is nothing but the data dot expected p of contrib and then I'm going to paste it right here and the actual value is going to be the value coming from the client so client dot get employee contrib so far with ID and the ID is going to be data dot employee ID so the employee ID is nothing but this column right so I'm gonna pass that here great and since this is going to be a dynamic type we have to explicitly convert that to an integer type else there will be a problem so I'm just gonna do a casting there all right and then maybe we can also write a console dot write line uh, and we can say that the value is correct or not 
so uh, we can add that or maybe we can also have a message saying the pf contribution is not as expected great i'm going to save it and now i'm going to quickly run this test and see how it works so for that i also need to do one more change maybe right here uh, in the spec flow and here i'm going to say unit test provider name is equal to ms test and now you see that the check employee pf contribution employee uh, method is coming so now i'm going to run the selected test all right now you can see that the test got passed and if you see the output it says it is perfect right so now if you uh, go to your uh, scenario and if you change this to one five one eight three and if you try to run this test you should see that the test will fail all right now you can see that the test got failed right and it's expected because uh, that's not the right one right and in the next test we'll add some more scenarios uh, on the top of these scenarios and then we'll see how to work with that right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day